Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Elisa and this is the Knitting Stories podcast episode, I think 12, guys. Yes, that's a lot. So, well, just to start, I just want to let you know that I'm recording these uh, on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I've just finished work. I've just... Uh, you know, come home uh, and I'm very tired so I'm sorry if today I'll be rambly and a little bit like, you know, tired but just this is life and my life is becoming very tiring at the moment. Um, just for a brief introduction, I have a new job, I've been working in a museum in Milan for I think since the beginning of December and my days have become more and more uh, have become busier and busier and uh, finding time to knit uh, is becoming harder and harder but despite these I still have some finished objects uh, and I would say a lot of works in progress um, that I'd like to show you my finish ob finished objects actually won't be mm, that many, I think. They're mainly um, accessories, but this is because we were, you know, in the gift knitting period and I really didn't have the time between work and gift knitting to make some selfish knit, unfortunately. Um, so in the past episode uh, you would have seen that I had some gift on my needles uh, and they are now finished. I will talk about some of them but I will leave some of them to the, uh, you know, uh, to my previous podcast episode just because I spoke about them um, very thoroughly in, uh, in, in that moment. But let me start with what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a sweater that I don't wear that often and you will understand the reason in a minute or maybe you can already see the reason why I don't do uh, I don't do that. So this is the piece of silver sweater by Vera Vallimaki. I, I think it's pronounced like that. And I've knit these, uh, these in Retrosaria Rosa Pomar Mundim in a colorway. I don't remember the colorway. Um, but it will be written in the description for sure. And while I love this yarn, it is not scratchy, but you should, you know, you should know that I'm, I like, for me, um, there's no scratchy yarn, I think. There's only, you know, scratchy mohair sometimes with specific yarn brands. I'm very sensitive to wool when it comes to my feet, but actually when it comes to my body and also to my neck, I'm not that sensitive. So uh, these would probably be a little bit scratchier for someone who is uh, sensitive to wool. Um, Still, I really enjoyed working with this yarn. It's very round, it's well plied. I love the uh, color, um, the colors of this specific colorway. I love how um, this creates interest, visual interest, despite this is a very simple raglan sweater. This was the first raglan sweater and the first sweater, uh, sweater I've ever made. The reason why I don't like it is that I think it has some feet issues and I guess you can see <laughs> you can see them like from the neck the neck is very high but at the same time we have some problems when it comes like um, I don't know uh, this sweater has short rows but sometimes it feels like it doesn't so that the uh, neck does this thing here and this is mainly the reason why I don't wear it that often so, you know, one of my um, goals for 2024 will be to frog this sweater and repurpose this yarn to make maybe another Raglan sweater, maybe with a better fit for me. Well, that would be a dream. I don't know if I'll ever make it, but I really hope so. Um, so I think we can just jump right into uh, finished objects and if you have some other curiosities about this sweater just uh, pop them in the comments down below. Um, when it comes to uh, finished objects uh, I only have a finished object uh, here with me or better two which make 
one um, and the others were all gift knits so maybe we can talk directly about my uh, saga mittens it's this one so let me hold just one sorry for the lighting it's very it's very this lighting is very um, how do you say very warm so probably everything will appear a little bit uh, orangish let's say um, so these are my saga mittens I really love them as you can see they are beautiful mittens with these cable details on the cuff and also on the thumb and on the hand uh, working them was very enjoyable I really liked the process the I would say that the pattern is clear if you know how to read charts because uh, this pattern is entirely charted uh, and uh, there are no written instructions so buy this pattern only if you know how to read charts or only if you want to know how want to learn how to read charts um, for the rest, uh, I found the charts very clear, very easy to read. Uh, I didn't have any problem when it came to understanding the pattern. Uh, the pattern I was talking about, about it, it's the Saga Mittens by, by Maria Fiske. Uh, and um, yeah, it requires worsted weight yarn and I used Retro Zaria Rosa Pomar uh, a lot of Retro Zaria Rosa Pomar uh, yarns, but I used the Retro Zaria Rosa Pomar uh, Beira, which is a beautiful, almost, uh, I don't want to say unspun, but it's very lightly spun, uh, this very lightly spun yarn, uh, which softens uh, uh, hugely when you, when you wash it. When you're working with it, it feels very scratchy and very rustic, but when you wash it, it becomes softer um maybe um yeah it's very it's still a rustic yarn so if you're sensitive to wool maybe um that is not the best choice you could make for yourself uh, but still for maybe a, an accessory like mittens you know you wear i usually wear this when i'm outside so especially on the wrist uh, wrists they're never exposed to this kind of wool I always have like a t-shirt uh, underneath um, it's perfect and what I love the most is the fact that this uh, yarn still has some bits and pieces which are not dyed and which leave um, and, and, and from which you can see the real color of the yarn which in this case was this beautiful black probably the color is horrible because of the lighting I have in this moment but this was the only moment I found this week to just film a podcast episode um, all in all you have two sizes but the sizes just change when it comes to the length I made the smaller one uh, there are no size changes when it comes to, you know, the width uh, and the uh, girth, uh, I would say, of the wrists uh, and so on. So the only change is that of the length. You just simply uh, need for a shorter, uh, need shorter uh, mittens, not, uh, you know, tighter mittens. You could always make changes, I think. You could always adapt the pattern, but of course, it's not that easy if you're a beginner knitter and I really didn't feel like it and also these were mittens these are mittens I want them to be very comfy and cozy I just need them to cover and my hands and keep them warm so it was okay like that like this uh, these were my uh, train this was my train knits uh, knit when I it, it's the knit I'm work the project I was working on when I uh, commute to work and now I don't have a train project so probably I will need to make I will need another cast on uh, but yeah this is the only finished object that I have here with me I have something else uh, I've already talked about the other uh, I've, I've already talked about the, the brioche scarf chunky by uh, Ganox Licht in my previous episode that was a gift knit probably like an image a picture will pop up 
here somewhere. Um, that was a, um, a gift net that I made for my sister because she wanted to gift it to um, her boyfriend's mom and I made that. You can find a lot of other information in my uh, previous podcast episode. Uh, just because I've already talked a lot about that and I don't want these episodes to be repetitive if, you've ever, if you have already seen them. Um, when it comes to gift need, I also made something for a friend. Uh, it was uh, um, um, a friend's birthday on the last day of 2023, so I've decided to make her an Oslo hat. I wanted it to be something special. And so, um, like, it, this is not the first time I knit an Oslo hat. I wanted to make something special, so I chose to knit with uh, Sunless Garn Double Sunday, which is not, you know, the cheapest yarn, also because I had to buy three balls, uh, which is a lot. Um, it's like 25 euros, but I really like the yarn. I know that a lot of people don't like, don't enjoy working with uh, uh, Double Sunday uh, because they said that the applied structure it varies and changes throughout the project, throughout the skein, but I really enjoyed it and I chose a very, you know, crazy color which is uh, Statement Green, also known as 8236, you know that uh, Sunness Garn uh, yarns uh, have both uh, colorway name for the colors and also color codes but on the you know tag they only have color codes so it's statement green uh, or colorway 8236 it is this beautiful very bright green that I know my friend loves and I don't have this project here with me because I actually finished it in like I think two or three days um, it was a very, it was really a sort of palette cleanser or something like that, like a very uh, stockinette and like mindless stockinette knit. Um, and uh, yes, I, in the end, I only used two skeins, like I didn't even open the third one. And so, in the end, I spent less money than what I was expecting for a beautiful hat with uh, the perfect uh, circumference. Uh, I need the size adult small uh, for a, like 55 centimeters head circumference, I think. Uh, the only thing that I, the only modification that I make to the pattern, made to the pattern is that when the pattern wants you to knit the brim, it makes you do a sort of stockinette tube, which must be 20 centimeters longer, long, I think. And I've just decided to reduce that length and make it shorter. Um, and but, oh, shorter of like two centimeters, so that was the only modification. But really, and this helped me using less yarn than what, what I was expecting. So now I know that when I want to make an Oslo hat for another friend, maybe I can only buy two skeins and get away with them. Um, so yeah, I'm very sorry that I don't have it here with me, uh, but maybe I'll pop a picture here with you know, very. Um, you know, it won't be a beautiful picture, uh, but I'm sure it will help you understand, you know, construction and colors. And if you want to make a hat, I really think that the Hoslo hat is a beautiful pattern, a very, uh, a staple pattern that every knitter should have in their, you know, library. Um, but at the same time, you could also choose something else, not just patini. I just used that pattern because I already had it in my, in my library. As I was telling you, I don't have a lot of uh, uh, finished objects, uh, um, so that's it. But I have two works in progress and a swatch, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so let's start with the first work in progress, which was a work in progress also in my previous podcast episode. But this became a mess, actually. And uh, let me show you. this one okay so this is 
the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta. It's the first time, it's my first knitted cardigan, which is like crazy that I, I never, like, I've been knitting for three years now, and this is the first time me I, that I make a cardigan. Uh, it's crazy. Um, and like the last time I had almost anything on my needles, almost nothing on my needle, needles, but now I'm almost finished with the body. Like I just need to make the last buttonhole and after that I just need to make the, um, you know, the, uh, the hem and ripping down at, um, for, for the finishing of the body. And then of course I just need to make my, um, my sleeves, but that will be very, uh, you know, faster because this one is all uh, stocking at knitted flat. And so uh, pearl rose and knit rose, uh, and it's sometimes it's hard also because of the yarn that I've chosen, but I will speak about it in just a second. And also the construction of this gar garment wants you to make the buttonhole, the button bend, while you are knitting uh, flat your body. So this was very, you know, uh, physically, um, physically uh, demanding, I would say. Um, so, and also um, maybe, uh, maybe I just hated myself that day, but I am using these kind of, you know, double pointed needles, which were my grandma's. And the only problem is that these are very long. It, those are these are uh, needles that my grandma used to make, uh, used to use to make um, socks. And you should you could say yes, but you could buy other needles. And I just like I can't because I really want to use my grandma's needles. And I know that this is very you know stupid maybe, but I really feel like. I would make something wrong not using these. It makes me feel very uh, in connection to her, I'd say. Um, so I really wanted to use these needles and to just, uh, um, you know, have a connection with my grandma. She's still alive, of course, so she doesn't uh, need any more, uh, but she knows that I need it. And when she'll see this, she will, of course, ask me if I use their needles, as she always does, and I'll finally be able to tell her that I did. Uh, so this will be a very happy moment for me, and I can't wait. Now, the um, about the yarn. The yarn, I'm sorry if you can hear noise, uh, but there are other people in my house at the moment, meaning my mom and my sister, so they are here and alive and they make noise. Um, so about the yarn that I'm using, I'm using um, the suggested yarn, which is Manchelopis by Wool Dreamers. It is a non-spun yarn. And the uh, great thing about these is that you know, it is already double stranded, as you can see here, um, so that he, I could achieve gauge, uh, which is, just give me a second because I have my Ravelry here, a gauge of 15 stitches per 24 rows with a 4.5 millimeter needles. The suggested needle size for the pattern uh, is actually six millimeter needles, but I am, <laughs> Like I'm a, I'm a loose knitter and this is like proof. I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles instead of six. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh yes, the yarn. I'm really um, I'm really a fan of Manchelopis because I love how soft it is. But I'm having some issues this issues this time. Uh, a little bit of rowing out that I really hope it will be um, it will disappear with wash and block uh, and another issue is that I'm just yeah. sharing this because maybe someone else uh, is experiencing the same thing but my hands my skin is so dry on my hands like it, I don't know why but it's very um, I've never had dried hands like these I don't know if these make sense but you know when you're when your hands are a little bit rough and scratchy and you know uh, just they're not very soft as always and since uh, i've started working with this yarn i'm experiencing this thing and i don't know if 
that's just me or if that's someone else but I've never heard anybody mention these things so I was maybe wondering if someone would like to share something about this because I'm very worried that it's actually something else and it, I don't understand why uh, but yeah I'm using a lot of hand cream so I hope it will be okay and all in all uh, this won't take very long just enjoying the process it's a very long process it's something I'm working on only you know uh, during the evening in front while I'm watching the TV or when I'm watching Netflix so when I have a lot of space where I can move around my needles uh, when I can move around my uh, plate of manchelo pizza uh, just because it's a very you know um, it's a very delicate yarn and I don't want it to break it and I want to break it on public trans pra transportation you know and that's it I think for uh, the Travelers cardigan the pattern is very clear as always Ozetta is really a great designer I really enjoy her writing style everything is precise without being too much I, I think and really probably Ozetta's patterns are the best I've ever worked on I would say uh, now I would like to present you my uh, last work in progress which is also probably my favorite work in progress that I have at the moment and it's I, I bet you can you can recognize this one come on I know I know you you know that beautiful cable in the middle it's the Busan sweater by Egonit, and I really can't believe I'm making this with Wulia by Gepard Garn. Um, it's a gorgeous yarn, but first let me talk about the pattern. So the Busan sweater is this beautiful raglan uh, sweater uh, with these gorgeous raglan details here and with these uh, gorgeous, amazing, I don't know, call it as you prefer, a um, huge cable uh, in the middle. I really love both the look of it and working on it. It's very fun. It, it, you know, it's a simple raglan sweater, but because of this beautiful uh, cable, you're always waiting for the next row in which you need to make this cable. So it's very entertaining, I would say, without being too much for my head now that I have to work. So I'm really, I'm really enjoying the process um, and uh, yes, there's nothing much to say about this sweater. Maybe I can talk a little bit about the yarn. Um, the pattern is from Egonet um, and the yarn I'm using is the suggested yarn. Actually, the original uh, sample would want me to use to help Wulia by Gitpart Garn with mohair. Uh, but I didn't want to for two reasons. First of all, the price. Like if I had bought more hair, I would have spent like 50 euros more than, I, than what I spent. Um, and also because I live in Italy, uh, winters are cold. I live in northern Italy and winters are cold, but not that cold. And this is already, you know, a very, um, a, a, a quite a, big yarn I would say it's very warm um, and I know it would have been too much to use more hair with this so I'm using Wulia which is a beautiful yarn actually it's produced from uh, um, Merino sheep here in Italy which li who live here in Italy uh, in Puglia which is a region in southern Italy and then they, the, of course these canes are sold by Gepardgan which is a Danish company if I'm not wrong so I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm producing something with uh, a yarn that comes directly from my country you know um, and I've chosen uh, this ball like is for 50 gram you get I think 133 meters but with a big gauge because this is almost I think this is Aaron yes I got gauge which is 16 stitches per 25 rows using 5 millimeter needles so this is quite a lofty yarn and I can assure you that when you wash this it it literally blooms it like 
it really um, covers all the holes uh, of the um, of the I would say of the fabric uh, so I think it's perfect also worked all along I've chosen a very weird but also like beautiful color I've chose I've chosen the color uh, 760 uh, which was described as anthracite you know that very dark gray but actually these reads a lot as a very uh, a navy uh, which is leaning towards a gray I don't know yes I, I would describe it like these but actually I, I'm, I'm loving this I'm loving this exactly for the reason why that I cannot say if this one is navy or if this one is is gray so that I can wear this color with so many uh, things in my wardrobe and that's gorgeous like I'm, I really enjoy this thing I'm knitting size 2 if I'm not wrong even if I have only 10 skeins and I would need 10 and I would need 11 sorry uh, but I really think it, I, it won't be like the body is not almost done but I'm at a good point and uh, um, yeah then I only have the arms uh, and I really can't wait to have this finished also because uh, I want to wear this this winter uh, it's beautiful guys if you uh, have the you know if you can buy Vulia I think it's a great choice uh, and it's not that uh, it's not that pricey I think it's around five or six euros per skein uh, and uh, it really like it's good it's good money uh, because like beautiful yarn and also good nitrate like with only 10 skeins you would get 100 more than 100 1300 meters worth of yarn and it's great because it blooms and you will have big gauges too so yeah as you can tell i'm loving my projects at the moment uh, but none of them are portable uh, and actually um, I don't have any more works in progress but I have a swatch I have a swatch because in my winter knitting plans uh, I did talk about the fact that I want another very simple uh, sweater you know a staple piece and I already had something in my uh, in my stash which is the busy garn Loch Lomond and this beautiful chocolatey brown with blue speckles maybe I can point them out to you if you can see them and actually my plan with this was to make the um, was to make the how do you call that oh my god uh, was to make the Harlow sweater by Kadri I don't know why I'm just tired from work I think the Harlow sweater by Kadri, uh, which uh, has a gauge of 18 stitches uh, per 19 stitches per 28 rows, and uh, I was thinking that this yarn, like so the uh, gauge which is indicated here on the tag, is 18 stitches per 28 rows in a 10 per 10 centimeter gauge in stocking at stitch. You get. 150 meters in a 50 gram ball so it's great but the more <coughs> sorry <coughs> but the more I looked at, at these I, I was the more I thought I was thinking that it needed to be paired with something because I'm a very loose knitter and uh, you know this is very thin for just a 19 centimeter centimeter uh, 19 uh, stitches gauge so i went to a local yarn shop which is called lana di miele in milan and uh, i found uh, i didn't want to use more hair so i found some uh, uh, lace weight alpaca and in the end i wanted to buy isaiah alpaca one but they but they didn't have the color i needed so i ended up buying whole titi titicaca and i must say it's great 
I love it. It's super soft. Uh, I really love its texture. I really, really love its ply. And I also love the color, which is the colorway Havana. And it's great because for only like for only uh, 50 uh, gram in a in a 50 gram bowl, you get 400 meters. So I just I had to buy only three bowls of Titicaca to have a sweater quantity, um, which was really cheap. And then I swatched, and this is my swatch, and I think it's beautiful. Like, it's beautiful, uh, you know, I love those blue speckles, uh, and I also love that this Loch Lomond is really, it's brown, but it has like a, a colder undertone, I would say, while this Titicaca Havana has like a very wor a, a warmer undertone, so that when I mix them together, um, they, uh, the color that I have and that I get is like a warmer brown but with those blue speckles and I think it's great like I really I really enjoy uh, this mix really enjoy this pairing and I think that I yeah I can't wait to cast on my Harlow sweater Okay, so this is the end of this very short podcast episode. Um, I know it wasn't the best maybe because I'm very tired from work because uh, my life has become very, oh, oh my God, super uh, busy. Um, uh, super busy, uh, but I still want to make YouTube videos. I find it very fun and really it's just like another creative outlet all together with knitting and they kind of complete themselves because in this way I'm really able to talk uh, with you and have a dialogue with other knitters all around the world. Um, so yes, I'm very happy to manage and succeed to post new videos at least once every two weeks, but I really hope to be able to post a video once a week. That would be amazing. Um, so now the lighting is completely going away, so this is the time when I say goodbye. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to stick around, just subscribe to the channel. This would make me incredibly happy. Um, yeah, this is the end of this video. So happy knitting. Bye bye and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.